Hello guys, welcome to another video of ODI Engineer. So as I said, uh, we are <clears throat> revamping our website. So our website will be possibly going live on end of April or first week of May. And today I'm going to discuss about uh, SAP system copy and migration related some questions which are basic and this is the part one. So subsequently there will be different parts. Before I proceed further, so just a quick announcement. We have upcoming training in BTP, Cloud LM, also as for HANA administration. Also, we have for basis and HANA, which is advanced level, AWS and Azure training as well. So you can look for whichever training you're looking for, and you can connect with my team on 84668080. Guys, we don't charge. You know, like how the other people do, uh, the other people do, because uh, there are a lot of companies, a uh, lot of organizations provide training just for the sake of it. But what you are going to learn here is completely hands-on, completely deep level knowledge. We're going to get it, and it will be a really good experience. And after the training, you can comfortably work in any live environment without any issue. OK, for BTP also we have covering. We are covering a lot of topics, uh, so we do not divide each part into different training and we charge it like that, like how other people are doing anyways. So we're looking for it and also for server access. If you need any SAP server, you can connect to uh, our support team as well. So let's see uh, with the interview questions. So this is a very basic question for. Freshers mostly who doesn't have idea. So because I am going to cover from the basic till advanced level and this the first station is only free for the non members for part two, part three, part four, other part which will be coming that will be only for the members. So you can take the membership with paying 119 rupees, which is pretty nominal and you can be part of our YouTube community. So the first thing is what's the basic difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous system copy. So system copy generally means you're building a new system from an existing system. So suppose you have a quality or any system exists, you want to create a replica. You can build a new system using the backup or taking the export import of your source system. So the homogeneous and heterogeneous, how you need to determine is based on the OS and database. Suppose your operating system is changing from Linux to AIX or maybe AIX to Windows or any of the OS, or your database is changing from Oracle to HANA or Cybase to MaxDB. So it could be any combination. So that you are going to do the heterogeneous system copy. This is more critical. This is pretty straightforward since you are going to have the same OS and database in both the sites. I mean, in the source in the target system. Now let's go to the question number two. So what are the high level steps take place during the heterogeneous system copy? So there are a lot of steps actually, because if you want to know more, you can join our OSTB migration training or you can take the OSTB migration guide, or you can also purchase the OSTB recordings, OSTB migration recordings where I discuss in details. Since it's a question and answer session, so I'm not going to be in detail. So first is your preparations. So there are a lot of preparation steps required in the source system. Going to take the export of your source. This is a classical migration option. And when you export the source system data, you're exporting as a database independent format. Then you're going to transfer the files from source to target, or you can also do parallel system copy. I mean, parallel export import. So you don't need to do, you can just create a common mount point and you can directly transfer parallelly, like, you know, import and export will be done, which is pretty faster, but you need to do a lot of preparation for that. Then your new system installation uh, in the target site and you need to import the data. This one, when you are importing, exporting manually and importing manually, you want to do parallel export import, then this installation has to be done previously. So next is the post processing. So these are the high level steps, but each step contain multiple process you need to know. Which are the tools we are going to use during the migration of a source and target systems? The first thing is SWPM. So SWPM, we are going to use 1.0 or you have also 2.0 based on the S4 HANA systems. Uh, you know, because S4 HANA systems, you have to do the system copy or something, then obviously you're not going to change any OS or database. That would be homogeneous, of course. 
But if you are doing any other kind of system, so then business suite systems and all, so you can use the SWPM 1.0 and also for the Java systems. So what are the tools we need to use here? So generally we use R3 load program. This is what export import. You know, if you want to export and import the data, R3 load process is used by the migration monitor. Then you are going to use the R3 LD CTL. This is being used to create the structure files when you do the you know export preparation. R3 is just check again. It's going to use to check the you know the table and index sizes. This is again the part of the preparation step, and this is very important. And these programs are going to create a different set of files, which will be used for the you know exporting and importing the data in the target site. What's the purpose of the files that are used during a migration? So the first one is DDL, DB type, DPL. This is a template file. So template files are generally you know are specific to the database. So there are different different you know template files. You'll see also. Uh, LRG large template files also you're going to see that LRG.tpl files. So generally <clears throat> it contains the index or table definition. So specific to the database, you'll see multiple TPL files for the Oracle, DB2, Sybase, MaxDB, all the database you're going to see there. Then it's a structure file. So structure file generally being created, you know, when you take the export. So the structure file will contain the definition and, uh, you know, like you can say, table and index definition in the BAP dictionary. So you'll be seeing the .str files. Then next is the .exe file because .exe file will be, you know, in, it will be checking the initial size for your table indexes. And it uses R3 as your check program, of course. That's the tool we use to calculate the, I mean, to generate the .exe files. Then you can see the tabard files. So these are the dump files, what you see here, and you should not change anything in this files. CMD file contains the commands. It means you need to provide the location. So this CMD file will contain the location of your STR files and EXT files and the TPL files so that using the CMD file, uh, you know, your export import will be done. So whenever the migration monitor will be exporting the files, I mean, exporting the system, so it is going to use the .cmd files, which is the command files. Apart from that, you have the .toc. So toc is very important. This contains your, uh, you know, the position of the table. OK, also important thing is the timestamp. So because if you are, suppose you are doing an export and that has got failed, so the task file will be, you know, whenever you are restarting the export, so it will be fetching the data from .toc file. So till what timestamp, I mean, what is the data and what is the timestamp it is going to capture from there? So this TSC files is very important because even the TSC file, you are not going to change, you know, like anything in this file. So this is uh, something, you know, which contains your position of the table data and name of that file, then the timestamp of unloading, then the table rows number, everything will be there. So this is very important. It should not change it. Dot SAP tabard dot log file. This will be containing your. This will be containing the log files. So whenever you are, you know, like there are multiple data classes in SAP. If you are exporting it, it will be creating the log files. So that's the reason this will be. Uh, also, you can see the information whether the export has been done properly or not. These things and then your dot tsk file so task files are very important this is again being used by your r3 load and of course during the export and import by the migration mod next question what are the what interde interdependencies to kernel version must be considered so there are few considerations the first thing is Kernel plays a very important role in terms of uh, whenever you do an export import for the ABAP systems. For Java systems, it doesn't matter. So the kernel version, so you can always use the latest one. But for Java ABAP systems, the tools, what we're using, like R3 LD CTL, or we are using R3 load, everything should be on the same side as the source and the target. So in the source, if you're using the same kernel 753, the target also you have to use the 753. Okay. And second thing, also like the same kernel version. So because your kernel file contains R3 load. Kernel file contains, you know, like 
uh, you know, the R3 trans program. So there are a lot of programs which are default there in the kernel file. So if you're changing the kernel, so by default, the R3 load version also going to change. So that's the reason always use the tools of the same version in source and target, always use the same kernel. And also, uh, you know, you need to ensure that some cases we also download the R3 load manually, should so not do that. We need to stick to the same kernel in both the sides. So this is the thing you need to plan. So what post copy activities are required? So when I say the post copy activities, it means what are the activities you are going to do after the system installation? Any activity that you do after the system refresh, like applying the license, going for the, you know, your DBA cockpit configuration, STMS configuration, everything you have to do it. And also you need to clean up your existing jobs, which is coming from the source side. So all the configurations you have to delete from the source and you have to do the post steps. So you can refer to my system refresh videos. I'm in the playlist there. I deep, uh, deeply explain everything on how you do the cleanup for uh, source data in the target system and you set up the post activities in the target system. I think that's all for now. So this is just a part one. So the part two will be more detailed, more technical. I'll try to keep some more good questions so you can get more benefit. But before that, you need to ensure that you join the membership and you be part of that to access the premium content. Otherwise, you can still access the free contents what we have. And we have multiple trainings offered and you can see we have a bunch of trainings. Base is HANA, BTP, LM, AWS, Azure, CPI, migration, implementation, conversion, data sphere. In BTP also, we have multiple training, also in the other functional trainings. Looking for any training, you can join, you can connect with my team and get the information and accordingly you can enroll. So that's all for now. So take care and have a great day.